Hey everybody and welcome back to Das Studio and in this video we're going to look at how to make a really simple cell phone prop. First step we have to do in Photoshop though. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out and of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally if you are interested in supporting the channel you can do so by joining the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button or you can visit the patreon linked in the description down below so let's jump into this then so the first thing we've got to do is really create a image that we're going to put on the front of our cell phone so that it actually looks like a cell phone so what we need to do is actually adjust this image properties to match and i'm going to just mimic the iphone 12 size so in image going to go to image size don't need to have this checked if you don't want to it doesn't really matter and we're going to change our size to millimeters so that we can get this the exact right now width wise an iphone is 71.5 millimeters wide and height wise it's about 146.7 millimeters so if we go okay that is now an image which represents the shape and size of an iphone screen and for the sake of making this look legit, we're just going to give it a really simple gradient tool like that. That kind of gives us our iPhone background like that. And I'm actually going to pop some like kind of weird smoky effects or something over this as well. I'm just going to see what effects I've got in my brushes. So we've got some splatter, we've got some fog, we've got some water and some steam. I kind of like the idea of having a steamy background. Go with something black there. And then we're going to need to bring this down, I would imagine. Yeah. There we go. That's a kind of interesting looking iPhone background. Now the trick with this is to use the correct font as well. And the correct font color. So I've got white selected. And I'm using Helvetica 35 Thim. Like that. And I'm going to drop the size of the text down to about there. And then I'm just going to put random time there. And I'm going to hit that there, OK. And I can drag that. No, we don't want to do that. That's interesting. All oh, right, we've created a selection. So we can deselect that. That's fine. No pixels were selected. Cool. We actually want to create a text type using a type tool, not a text selection. Let's try that again. 10.03 was the time we had, that's much more like it. And now we've got a, a layer that we can move around like that. And then in my blending options, you double click on the uh, item in the layer menu and I'm just gonna create a drop shadow. I'm gonna go with, let's have a look and see how that looks. I'm gonna increase the distance slightly and increase the spread. So that it actually does have a spread. And then increase the opacity. Bring the size way down. Distance can change as well. Drop the spread back down. There we go. That's more like what we're after. The reason we're doing that is so that it actually stands out above the uh, background. I'm going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to just put in a uh, slide to unlock bit there. And then reduce this text size down so that it's kind of about there. How does that look? That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to drag. I need to turn that on. Drag this effect up onto the layer above it so that that text also has that on there. Now we could go mad and have loads of extra stuff on here, like a battery and a sing signal and stuff. But realistically, this this phone isn't going to be looked at a lot. But the surface of the phone might be a feature in a couple of shots, but it's not going to be something that we see a huge amount of. So I'm not, I'm not going to add loads more on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of new layers. This layer, I'm going to create a selection. I'm going to use the polygon tool. I'm just going to draw a selection across like that. Doesn't got to be perfect on the right hand side it's the left hand side that i'm looking at and then i'm going to use my brush tool i'm going to get rid of the smoky effect and go back to that tool go with pure white 
drop this down and then I'm just going to increase my opacity by a bit, increase my flow by a bit and then I'm going to draw something down there like that. Remove that selection and then I can always use a mask if I'm unhappy with perhaps this edge. So we can brush tool back in and we can just dust off that edge so that it looks a bit more like shine going across that corner. We can always drop it down in opacity if we think it's too much. And then on this layer I'm actually going to create a rectangular marquee selection around about that size but it's going to go the entire length of the object and I'm just going to fill that with pure white and I can use Control T if I feel like I haven't gone quite long enough so I think this one drag it all the way over yeah tick there Cool. and then if I want to I can zoom in a bit and I can control T again and I can just make that much much thinner kind of like that I really want it to be a really thin shine oh and now we appear to have dramatically decreased its size annoyingly let's just drag that back up there and back down there. That'll work, that's fine. Cool. So now we've got that, what we can do is we can save this image out and then go back into Daz Studio. All right, so now we're back in Daz. What we've got to do is firstly create our primitive, which is just going to be a cube. I'm going to click on this icon up here that's like three shapes smushed together. And I'm going to change to a cube shape. And I'm just going to start this off being one meter. We're going to adjust all of the properties almost instantly so we can view it from the right angle. So again, sticking with our shape, remembering that this is one meter. So we need our parameters to match the scale. So for example, one centimeter would be 0 0.01. So one millimeter would be 0 0.001. So easy enough to do. So we're going to change the depth of our iPhone at first. So that's 7.4 millimeters. So in our Y scale, we need to go 0 0.10 centimeters, 1 centimeter, 7.4. Boom. That is now as thin as it needs to be. Now, if we remember our dimensions, we've got our width, which is going to be our X scale is 71.5 millimeters which means it's uh, 0 0.0715 just going to double check that's correct yes that's right so that's fine and now we need to zoom on in And I think what I'm going to do is just out of interest, I'm actually going to remove one of those zeros and just see what happens if, uh, okay, maybe my scaling is off. Let's try going 10. <laughs> Let's try changing that. So now we've still got a one meter object. So we need to adjust our last dimension, which is our, it's 146.7. Uh, so this one is going to be 0 0.146. Seven. and yeah I suspect it as much so we need to actually reduce uh, increase that to 1.467 and that is entirely my mistake because I was totally not paying attention I was figuring I was working with percentages of there we go cool and I may even have to increase this again because I think that is actually still a tenth of the size that it needs to be easiest way yeah that's definitely <laughs> that's definitely wrong okay let's so let's lesson learned so we've got to move our decimal place by one so we're going there and we're going there 
and we're going to remove that one right okay that is a little bit more sensible now it's the right size to be a cell phone so there you go even the best of us i'm not saying i'm one of the best of us obviously even the best of us make mistakes from time to time cool so now we've got our box it's an iphone shaped box no biggie what we're going to do first is we're going to go into surfaces and i'm just going to cover this entire thing with uh, black so we're going to go to base we can change our properties if we want to i'm just going to stick with that for now i'm going to give it some metallicity and i'm going to change its base color to black happy days and if you wanted to if you've got plastic shaders in your i'm going to look and see in my content library if i've got plastic i'm pretty damn sure i have and i can actually add a plastic shader to that i think that's probably the wrong color let's go that's 3D lights, that's no good. Let's go, let's see if we've got any eye ray. Ooh, carbon composite. Could make our iPhone carbon composite. That's very exciting, isn't it? Not what we're after though. I just want to make it standard plastic. I want it to be fairly shiny. Just looking through my shaders to see if I've got something that was suitable. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, that'll do. Right, a standard plastic. Cool. Now what I need to do is I need to go into my geometry editor tool. With the cube still selected, I'm just going to select the front face. I'm going to go to geometry selection is fine. Geometry assignment. Now what I'm going to do is create a surface from selected. And I'm going to call this face i'm going to hit accept and now you can see that that has created a second surface so i'm going to click on that and where it says base i'm going to apply the same shader to it although the same shader there we go and now i can change the base color and i can browse and i can select the file that i created before just got to remember where i put it there it is and now i can assign that to that face and I remember I have to now go to white to actually apply that to there. Now if I actually select off of that face for a moment, go back to the move tool, we can see that it's kind of there. It is kind of there, but we have to find out if it's, I think that that might be uh, a little too big. So we can go into our geometry and we can actually change the tiles. I think that's going to have tried to wrap all the way around. So I reckon 2.2 .2 is probably, yeah, there we go. You can see now that the tiling is slightly off. So we can just drag that across until it's better. Same with vertical tiles. We can make sure that we've got the surface fitted to it correctly. And there we go. Now, if I were to select off of that, go into uh, NVIDIA iRay mode, we can have a look. And there we go, we've got a really basic cell phone prop that we've created by ourselves and we can customize the front of it as much as we want. You could do the same process for the sides and the back if you wanted to, but for the sake of really basic propage, I would say that that is a successful evolution. So I uh, hope you found that useful guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if we want to save this so before I rush off, we've got our object selected go to file and we're going to go to save as support asset figure prop asset and then we create a file name for it and then we can see product product name i'm just going to call this one uh, cell phone item name cell phone to content type is a prop you can add compatibility bases and stuff if you want to, but then you just hit accept and then it's gonna have a bit of a think and then that's now saved in my library. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next one, but until then you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.